So this is going through the auto function, which you can see I've got selected up here. Um, there's quite a few things that I wanted to go through because there's a, there's a lot of special features on this camera, so I don't want to do them on every single video, so this is going to have quite a bit of information, but um, let's get started with it. So when I was doing my introduction, I was talking about this function here. <clears throat> what this does is it allows you to... If you're very zoomed into an image and suddenly you you lose where you are in that image, you can press this button, it zooms out, you can use this square that you see on the screen, you can use that to select the area that you want to focus on and it zooms back into that area. It's quite often handy if you're very zoomed in, you can't find what you were on, you zoom out, you find it again and it zooms back into the distance that you're already zoomed at. So as an example, if you can see the um, doorknob there, oh, the camera's gone into save, a uh, power save. Um, so I'm just going to zoom into the doorknob as much as I can with it in focus. Obviously, I realise this is a screen filming your screen, but I think you can see it fairly well. So I'm zoomed into here. Now, if I suddenly go off to the side, either way, I lose my place where I am. I just press this button, it zooms out, and this white box appears. Now I'm going to just focus that onto the doorknob again, and I'll let go of the button. It zooms back into the same distance and finds that space for me. I also found that you can, you can quickly change what you're focusing on as well. So, say I was taking a picture of the door handle, but then there's a bottle of water to my left, and suddenly I want to look at that. So I press the button, it zooms out. I find the water bottle, I'll try and turn this so that you can still see it. So there's the water bottle there. And it zooms into the water bottle instead. I hope that's visible. So it's a really good function if you you know you are focusing on one thing and then you suddenly so see something else that's at the same distance. But it's it's quite hard, you know, if I just suddenly turn the camera and I'm trying to find the bottle, it's a lot more difficult to do that than it would be to just press that button, zoom out, concentrate on that area and zoom back in again. So that's a really good function, that's this top one here. Um, okay, so when we're in the auto function, if we press the exposure button, which is this top one, it goes on to tracking. Now, tracking's good if you've got a moving subject... Um, or a subject that you want to get from different angles. Um, you can select tracking on, you can press this button here, and that selects your area of focus. So if I bring this back in front, I'm just going to go to the door handle again. <clears throat> and now I'm going to select this button so that I can choose the door handle. So the door handle has to be within that white square. So I press it there. It's telling me if I want to stop the tracking and press it again. If I move, you can see the box is staying focused on that door handle. It keeps the, the focus of the image on that object, which is always handy if you've got an object that's moving around and you just want to make sure that you keep focused on it, just in case something else comes closer to the camera and distracts from what you're trying to take a picture of. And when you want to cancel that, you just press that button again, and the tracking stops. <clears throat> Another function this camera has is face detection. You need to make sure that you're not already tracking something. So if you just press the top of this uh, dial here, you'll see that tracking is switched off. And then if you go back to this uh, button which confirms where you're tracking, if you press that one, you then get face select and that's switched on. Um, obviously there's no faces in front of me right now, but um, it then selects the faces of people, it detects faces. The main men, uh, main function button in the middle here, it brings up a quick menu. Um, the first, the, the top one here, that's your aspect ratio, so you can change this, the uh, size of the image. You'll see that some of them fit well into widescreen. That's very widescreen, that one. Then these other ones are more for sort of standard TVs that are more of the uh, the square. Um, mine tend to be on 4.3 because that was a standard and I've never really needed to change that. 
um, if you go down one that's the size of the image so this one's telling you that you can go up to A2 with that size image so that's pretty large and if you wanted to change that it tells you sort of the size that your uh, your image will go to but it's always good to keep it on large if you can you can see this number changing here it's how many photos you can fit on the memory card um, it won't show you a number over a thousand it will go up to sorry over ten thousand it will go up to nine 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 and then stop but you can see I've got it it can go up to A2 and it's still on two thousand almost five hundred pictures so that's insane you shouldn't need more than that and then the last option here is for video so um, it's telling you um, the screen ratio for for movie obviously the higher the more you're getting in your image and then the smaller is for, for a standard definition smaller movies because as soon as you try and put that smaller movie onto a big screen it's going to be pixelated so you, you really want to stick to the high movie and again you can see these numbers changing that's the amount of time that you can film for um, obviously the lower the quality that's 88 minutes whereas on high quality you get 29 minutes but obviously you'll notice the difference so those are the main functions there you can you don't have to be on see there's a, a video mode up the top here you don't have to be on that to record a video if you all of a sudden see something you want to video you can just pop this button here you'll see it will go into video mode and the record button will go and then the counter will start going and it will tell you what size video you're in and everything like that and you can take a still during your video and it will carry on recording and you can stop whenever you need to reverse display is very good if you want to um, take a picture of yourself <coughs> or you and a group of friends and you want to turn the camera around the other way and see that you're all in the frame you just flip out the the screen and it will reverse the display so you're not trying to look at it upside down those are the basic things you need to know when you're using the automatic function on the power shot um, next video I'll do is a sports mode so that will be quite a quick video and I'll go around the presets and then I'll go through to using the camera on manual